Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go ahead and get started. Could I have your attention, please? Or maybe I could have an umpire make a call here real quick. Yeah, let us <laughs> Works every time. So I have to tell you, for those of you that are umpires, you'll, you'll appreciate this. The very first time I went to a national meeting, I'm sitting there at the table, just like, you know, people are talking, going crazy, and uh, we couldn't get anybody's attention. And so I believe it was Mr. Hansen and Mr. Humphrey who said, Mr. Cress, meaning Craig Cress, who's currently our executive director for USA Softball, says, we need a foul ball. <laughs> Folks, he, he called out a foul ball, scared me to death. And let's just say he got everybody's attention. If you've seen this guy make any type of a call, believe me, it got quiet really fast. So those of you who helped out here, thank you. You're not Craig Crest, though. Sorry about that. I don't want to be. No, you don't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to the H Hotel here in Midland, Michigan for the 2021 USA Softball of Michigan Hall of Fame Banquet. Thank you. It is so great to see everybody again. You know, it's been about a year and a half, and it feels a lot longer. I think softball is definitely a social game. It's a true team sport where family and friends come together, whether it's at the local level or for a state or national tournament. The game features bats and balls, rules and regulations, and other organizational pieces. But at its core, it's the people that make this game so very special. For example, for me personally, I had a chance the last couple of seasons to travel to various tournaments here and there just to check some things out. And it was certainly my element. I got to see people like Laura Jackson, who stepped back into the tournament director process again. It was awesome. People like Ed Machowski, who, quite frankly, when he works a tournament, I just feel better about things. There's people like Ryan Roberts, who, quite frankly, I do come to see him, but I'd rather see his much, much better half, Miss <laughs> Carey. But the fact of the matter is, it's like a family. It's a glorified family reunion. So tonight, we may be having a Hall of Fame banquet, but it's one giant family reunion to me. To all the people in this room, the players, the directors, the managers, the umpires, and of course, the family and friends, thank you for persevering, and thank you for continuing to be a part of this great game and for being a part of the USA Softball of Michigan family. Folks, if you wouldn't mind, please give yourselves a round of applause. So like we do every year, we make mention of the fact that you cannot have a Hall of Fame without Hall of Fame members. We are fortunate to have many multiple members here again today. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are a member of the USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame, I would ask you to please rise at this time to be recognized. Members of the USA Softball of Michigan Hall of Fame, please rise to be recognized. Stay down, Steve. Well, Steve Allen getting all excited. Not yet, Steve. Not yet, Steve. Maybe next, maybe next year. <laughs> we also do have to take some time to take a moment to recognize some members that we have lost. Especially during these times, it seems that our losses are even harder to comp contemplate. If you would, wouldn't mind, I would ask you to join me in a moment of silence to remember the following people. Don Petro, John Overfield, Jim Wright, John Langhorn Jr., Art Serafinsky, Gene Engel, Rick Matterin, and Leo Urban. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. As I said, we are a giant USA Softball of Michigan family. 
The last time we had this event, I had the honor of introducing and inducting a very good friend, Art Serafinsky. Just a few mo months after this banquet, in January of 2020, Art passed away due to complications of COVID-19. It is exciting to be here, but it's also very hard and bittersweet. The good news is, I know where Art is. And he's looking down on us right now, and he's pretty angry at me, I can tell you that right now. But he's saying something in my head, something along the lines of, don't be sappy, just do it, do it well, and then let's celebrate. So that's what we're going to do. Still, I would like to dedicate this year's event to the memory of my good friend and a member of our Hall of Fame, Mr. Art Serafinsky. And now, if you would, I'm going to sing a song for you as our prayer. And it seems kind of appropriate. This is not a political thing. This is not anything other than a song that I truly appreciate. And it's something that I think we could use at a time like, like this. Uh, feel free to join me if you would. But we're going to use the song, God Bless America, as our prayer today. So, ladies and gentlemen, shall we pray? God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie, to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you so very much. The H Hotel staff will dismiss each table. Please enjoy your dinner. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we'd like to welcome you to the 2021 USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame Banquet. My name is Darren Deistemars. I am the commissioner for USA Softball of Michigan and the Midwest Region Vice President to the USA Softball Board of Directors. And it is my honor to be a part of this illustrious event. As we said, this is about family, this is about celebration and honoring the best of the best. And we get to do that again for the first time in a while. So we thank you all for being here and making the trip here to Midland. A Couple of thank yous I would like to point out before we get started. First of all, I'd like to thank the H Hotel. We have had the opportunity to work with them for several years. And of course, when the pandemic hit, we had to make some very significant changes and they worked along with us to make that happen. So I would like to say publicly a special thank you to the staff of the H Hotel for continuing to make this such a great event. Could you please give them a round of applause. There's also a group of people here that I would like to recognize as well. This has been a challenging couple of years uh, on the field in particular. Uh, for those of us in local parks and rec, trying to come up with programs, and then when we do, trying to find people to staff them. The last couple of years for tournament play uh, has been a very, very challenging scenario for us. Yet, some way, somehow, it works. We have, in my opinion, the best umpire program in the country. Amen. And it was established by uh, two people, uh, several people, obviously, but two people who are here with us today, Bill Humphrey and Jerry Hansen. 
uh, who take this program and has brought it to heights beyond expectations. And I've said this a million times. When you're a Michigan umpire and you go somewhere to umpire, especially outside of state, more is expected of you simply because you're from Michigan and more times than not, you come through. You're on the plate, you're in the championship game, you're in the if game. So I would like to publicly thank once again, Bill Humphrey and Jerry Hansen for establishing the umpire program. But I would also like to thank current leadership. We have had some amazing tournament play for the last couple of years. And it took a lot of work by a lot of people in this room, a lot of wonderful umpires and people who stepped up in a big way. And you have to have a staff to lead them, and it was a challenge. So once again, I would like to thank four people in particular for their efforts for the past two seasons. Our umpire in chief, Brian Smith, Staff member Ross Martin, staff member David Shemp, and staff member Bob Covert. Gentlemen, I would like you to stand up, please, and be recognized. <laughs> and by the way, we have a tournament in the UP tomorrow. I need six umpires. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> But the, uh, the last person I need to thank, and uh, it just goes without saying that this young lady is the glue, the, uh, literally the foundation of this association. Um, we have a unique situation with me being in Holland and Debbie here in Midland with our state office. In some way, somehow, we make it work. We talk every day, it seems like, sometimes for a few minutes, sometimes for hours. And I could not imagine doing this uh, without her involvement. This stuff doesn't happen without, uh, without her. Uh, everybody needs a Debbie Sherwood in their life. And I would like, Debbie, you're gonna be very upset with me, but I don't care. <laughs> I would like you to stand up, please, and be recognized. And, and also, would you please come up and say a few words? No? Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no. All right. All right. Well, it's, I thought I'd ask. As we begin the, the ceremony, there's one very important part that I've asked uh, our president to, to cover before we jump into the, the uh, inductees. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the pledge program, the sponsorship program that this event uh, has. But I also want to make you aware of the fact that the gentleman I'm introducing is somebody who I consider uh, to be a very, very good friend, uh, as great a teammate as anybody I could ever ask for. And we've been together with this association for several years, <laughs> to say the least. And you know, once again, there are certain challenges that I've taken on personally and professionally. And I don't do that if I don't have people like Debbie in my life, people like Jerry and Bill who still will answer my calls if I need to, uh, and having a president who is supportive and helps get things done. So it is my honor to introduce to you the president of the USA Softball of Michigan, Mr. Troy Stowell. All right, so on top of being the uh, co MC for tonight, I get to uh, ask everybody for money. So get your wallets out, hold them high. Um, <laughs> Debbie will be around uh, collecting donations. <laughs> so Darren mentioned something a, a couple seconds ago. He mentioned the word teammates, and that led me to a, a great quote that I like to use. Um, I use it in my personal life, I use it uh, in the office, and I use it on the ball field. And it comes from the great Tiger, Mickey Lolich. And he says, to have good teammates, first you have to be one. And I think that represents USA Softball in its fullest. In this, the 40th class of the USA Softball Michigan Hall of Fame, we're excited to revel 
in our classes, every member that we've had from our inaugural class in 1982 to 2021 is here not just because of his or her God-given talents or their dedication to the sport, but also because they were a part of a team, a team with a primary sport or a primary goal to be the best that they could be, to have a little bit of fun along the way, to create lifelong friendships, all of which will be on display this evening. From the ball player, to the umpire, to the commissioner, to the tournament director, we all share in a love for this great sport. This past year has been interesting to say the least. Coming off the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we had many leagues and tournaments that were placed on hold. Some came back, some did not. Frankly, we didn't know what to expect coming into 2021. USA Softball of Michigan once affirmed our role in being the governing body of softball throughout the state of Michigan. For 2021, our tournament and our league numbers remain strong. Our umpire program continues to be the envy of the nation. And all of this is because of that shared love of the game. Many of us here in this room were itching to get back on the diamond in some way, shape or form to get back to some sort of normal, whatever that new normal was going to be. For 40 years and more than 360 ballplayers, umpires, sponsors, and commissioners are now enshrined in this great Hall of Fame. However, much of this would not be possible if it were not for those who have financially supported our Hall of Fame over the past several years. It's their generous donations every single year. The Hall of Fame pledge program recognizes those who have made all of this possible, evenings such as this, their dollar support, Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, but they also support the physical Hall of Fame and the collection of historic memorabilia that's located just down the road. You can find more information about the Hall of Fame pledge program in the back of your program tonight, but I want to take a minute to thank those who, part who participated in our 2020 and 2021 Hall of Fame pledge program. Those names are listed on the inside cover of your program. Starting off with our on-deck support, we had Ellen Paulette and Beverly Neville. In the single category, we had Al Deemer, Richard Honig, Mike Kozak, Bob Ryan, and Bruce Stre St uh, Streelman. Sorry, Bruce. In the double category, we had Will William Glenn Davidson. And in the triple category, we had Penny Nup. I'd like to bring up to the stage our home run and grand slam uh, pledges that we had here tonight. We've got a little uh, parting gift for you, a uh, signed autograph ball by all of our inductees tonight. And for our grand slam uh, pledges, we have a uh, custom 2021 uh, bat for you as well. In the home run category, we had William Streelman. And in the grand slam category here with us tonight, Gary Evans and Harold Kruger. Gary, Dan, and William, if you can come forward for a photo with your awards. Harold's back in the corner wearing a hideous looking maize color shirt, so I don't blame you for not coming up, William. Sorry, we'll try to get everything. I know the state game's about to kick off or has kicked off. Does anybody know the score? Nobody knows the score of the game. It's amazing. There we go. Go green. All right, so I do get to kick things off with our first inductee for the night. And uh, I, I love this. Um, tonight gives us an opportunity to come together. One of my favorite things is, is really hearing about all of the nicknames. I mean, everybody's got a nickname uh, out there on the ball field. Some of them are better than others. 
Um, unfortunately, I've had my nickname since about 1992. I won't tell you guys it, but uh, it's not fun. Not fun. But uh, our, our first uh, inductee for the night, um, it, it's a perfect nickname, and uh, that's Ace Lockridge. What is there to say about our first inductee that hasn't been said already? Ace is a gamer, a fierce competitor, he's a leader of men, a gifted athlete, he's a player's player, and tonight, he's a Hall of Famer. Following Ace's playing career, it was never a matter of if he was going to be a Hall of Famer, but when. Ace, tonight is a night. Tonight you will join a fraternity of some of the best in the world to ever play and work this great game. Tonight is your night to be recognized for your accomplishments and to thank those who helped you along the way. To eat some amazing food, to reminisce about the good times, the trophies won, the blown calls, and the friends that you made along the way. But let's take a minute to focus on Ace's career as a ball player and to leave the good old days talk for the afterglow. Even as a 14-year-old rookie, Ace was one of those kids who displayed the mindset of what we consider an old-timer. He understood the way that the game should be played and what his role was and how to gain that competitive advantage in any situation. Ace started his career as a catcher and a first baseman, but soon learned the craft of pitching. His old-timer mindset led him to a 30-plus year career as a pitcher, leading his team's success throughout the state, whether it's at the local, district, regional, state, or national level. Ace is one of the more recent inductees from the fast pitch game that I was never lucky enough to see in person, though I wish I had. From what I've read and heard, he was a crafty pitcher. He was a bulldog. And as fellow Hall of Famer Alan Pollitt noted, he was a strategist. Not many times do you hear somebody in our game referred to as a strategist, but I think in this uh, case, it fits perfectly. Ace had the ability to get his team out of sticky situations, whether that's a late inning crucial strikeout with runners on base, a timely walk, and sometimes a timely hit batter. Maybe it's because of that old timer mindset he displayed during his early years. Six times Ace led his teams in national championship play back when you had to win and earn your right to compete at that level. He earned all American status in 1994. He's also a five time state champion and in 1995, he led his AUL Flint team to a runner-up finish. During that tournament, he pitched 50 and two-thirds innings with an incredible .97 ERA. Reading through his stats, I think that might have been Ace's best year of his career. He finished 17 and one in league play with a .53 ERA, and he kept his opponents to a miserable 127 batting average. Ace Lockridge truly, truly had a Hall of Fame career. And Ace, it's my honor tonight to be the first to officially welcome you as the newest member of the USA Softball of Michigan Hall of Fame, class of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, Ace Lockridge. I'm really in a, in a flying high mode here because I never really ever thought about being here in my life. Uh, but I came a couple years ago to see my son uh, be inducted. And now I'm here with an awesome group of old guys that I, I loved in the day and I love today. But if you'll... Uh, uh, Excuse me here, I want to go into a little bit of a Biden mode. And I don't have a teleprompter, but I have a list so I don't miss anything that I want to say. So I'm supposed to, I really am honored to be here. Uh, and I'm having a hell of a lot more fun than I anticipated. Uh, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And I've met some new friends uh, because contrary, in the old days I was, uh, I was competitive, and I wasn't your friend. 
Uh, uh, but today I'm everybody's friend because, you know, I'm 72 years old and I look back more than I look forward. Uh, and I remember better when I was young. So bear with me for a couple of minutes here and uh, I'll read a little bit of what it, it's a long way from Mrs. Fox, third grade. That's when I uh, first fell in love with softball. She'd give up. If you're a teacher, you know that recess is uh, for your own work and your own good. But she was a gray-haired old lady then and came out and pitched to us in third grade. And from that day on, I was hooked on softball. Uh, so, but... You know, I practiced myself because I had no neighbors that played in a cow pasture and a rubber ball and, and two baseballs and a bat was my ground balls and my fly balls off the roof in the pasture for hitting the ball as far as I could hit it. To, but I batted cross hands, so that probably never even helped me. Uh, I was privileged, I got here because I was privileged to play with so many outstanding athletes. A lot of them are sitting back over there in the corner and and I didn't realize at the time how much I really would miss them uh, because at some point we all get old or get hurt and have to leave the game. But I'd like to honor my first catcher ever in church league who put up with a lot. Walter Kinsey, would you stand up for a moment? Uh, our best play... <laughs> Our best play was to get a runner at third base and throw while pitcher, pitch and runner was, Walter was uh, running back to the backstop and we'd tag him out at the plate because everybody's young and real old in, in church league. So you are a wonderful young lady. I, you're making me feel more comfortable all the time. Uh, so I really love you, Walter. There's not a better person in the world than you are. Uh, I'd like to thank my nominators, Tom Stasek, Gary Campo, Al Pellet, and Al Rodimer. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your recommendations. And Coot, uh, you've been a pain in my ass for a long time <laughs> trying to get me to be here. Uh, but I'm here, and I appreciate all the pushing. Del Bunsen, Benson, I uh, appreciate you organizing. Uh, my brag sheet. So it's, I mean, I brag about a lot of things, my kids and all of that stuff, but the career was just my career. I'd like to play, pay tribute to my family. Uh, Jeanette, my first wife, would you stand up, please? Well, wave your hand. That's all good. Because when you, if you stood up, they wouldn't know. <laughs> all right. Lisa, my wife. It could, could be, yeah. Yeah, same age as my daughter. Hey, I started early. But if, if, you, if you want to share later, I'll share when I started, whatever. Because I'm your friend now. So uh, my, my first daughter, Shelly, and her husband, Chris. There you go. Uh, my favorite son, Pete, I have one, but you may recognize him if you play fast pitch. Uh, my number two daughter, but that's only in chronological because she thinks she's number one. And her husband, Matt, he's totally disinterested in the program. My, my grandkids, Evan and Jenna. And anyway, in that group, there are six pitchers, an outfielder, a first baseman, and a coach. So we're not, uh, you know, we're not the king in his court, but, you know, anyway, I started out a catcher, so we could at least do that part. Uh, lastly, I believe that fast pitch softball is the greatest game ever. Uh, it just is. It is so sad to see that it's dying out. Uh, I know the Frank and Uth boys are working hard if you got a kid. Uh, talk to one of those guys sitting over there in the corner because they're trying to make it live longer or get it back. Women are doing wonderful in fast pitch. They've 
really awesome. But I thank you all for uh, your time. And if I got any minutes less left, which I'm sure I do, uh, I will give them to the next nominee. But thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And really cool, guys. Thank you. I met Ace for the first time earlier today, and he showed up in a hat and a Hawaiian shirt, and I wasn't sure how he was going to do here today. I'll be honest, that went better than I thought it was going to. I uh, really, uh, I got to admit, I'm sitting back here, oh, you know, and I was really hoping Matt would, you know, stay relaxed. It's okay, you don't, don't get too excited, but, you know, Matt's asleep, so we're good. Everything's good. Ace, well done, buddy. Great way to start off. Well done. So the next person we get to talk about is Jim Parker. You know, there have been some people who have been a part of this game in some way for many, many years. Some people have a true passion for this game, and it's demonstrated by their demeanor on and off the field, also by the number of championships that they have attained. It's one thing to have longevity and passion, but when someone displays a true love of this game, it's hard not to recognize them. When it comes to Jim Parker, I think it is safe to say that this is someone who truly has a love for this game. The on-field accomplishments are just numerous. Nine undefeated seasons in USA ASA sanctioned leagues, 45 USA ASA sanctioned league championships, multiple state championships in Michigan and Illinois, one USA ASA regional championship, three USA ASA national championships, three USA ASA All-American Awards, and a USA ASA Most Valuable Player Award. Mr. Parker has been recognized as a phenomenal hitter. Here are some of the comments that his peers had to say. His ability to place the ball with consistent contact is amazing. He has faced all kinds of gimmick defenses to try and stop him from hitting the ball in a certain area. But, he can simply review the defense, see where they are, and place the ball wherever they are not. Some way, somehow, he can put the ball wherever he wants to. Therefore, that's why his batting average is somewhere around the 700 range. He hit for power, he hit for average, and he was a premium defender. Speaking of that, let's talk about his defense. Some more comments for you, sir. He displayed a tremendously strong and accurate arm with outstanding range and great hands. At times when he played shortstop, he was doing so at a major level. And at that level, that range required, the range that was required and the arm strength that is necessary needs to be better than average. Jim Parker was a better than average player. When you hear comments like this, it's obvious his love of the game made him a complete player. When you have a player like that, it is an awesome thing to witness, whether you are a teammate or if you're in the unfortunate position of being an opposing player. If one were to sum up the career and impact that Jim Parker has on this game, it was a comment contributed by Bill Humphrey that sums it up the best. Bill said, when I, what I saw was a young man with tremendous athletic ability, a young man with endless desire, the ability to concentrate at the task at hand, and the, ter the determination to get the job done. What I see today is the very same thing, except he is no longer young. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have the opportunity to induct a complete player. It is my honor to introduce to you the newest member of the USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame, Mr. Jim Parker.
I'm at a loss for words. So just uh, thank you so much. Um, I've been fortunate. I've uh, played with a lot of good players for on a lot of good teams and at every level, whether it was co-ed tournaments, all the way up to the men's major and played in the NSPC, which is the super level. And I, I got to play out for Anheuser-Busch out of St. Louis for about six, seven years. So um, the games have been wonderful to, uh, to me. I've been able to travel all over the United States playing, whether it be at, uh, in Colorado. And uh, just one of the things, with, if you go to Colorado, the ball does travel further. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a special moment when that does. But uh, like was mentioned, I like to look at the defense and where they play. But when I was in Colorado, I started to look over the defense and out in center field is Pikes Peak. So that's even uh, more special. Played in Las Vegas, uh, played down the Smoky Mountain Classic down in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, back in the day, when you, when you played in those types of tournaments, there'd be 128, 150 teams. And you'd go through and you just play and play and play. And uh, somehow every now and then our team would win a couple of those. So it was... Uh, just amazing, uh, just amazing. But I need to thank some people first. Uh, e, thank you for the nomination. And Frage and Wendell and Dad and Andy, just current teammates that are here tonight. Just uh, as you know, teammates, as everybody has said, just teammates are just so special and just uh, keeps you wanting to come back every day, every game for, geez, now it's been 50 years. So uh, thank you guys, thank you so much. To my wife, Michelle, to, uh, daughter, Chris, and her husband, Vic, to Sandy and Dick, uh, sister and brother-in-law, and Carol, thanks for coming tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, and Dick, you know, just all the years that you spent teaching this game to your daughters and uh, many other girls as well. Thank you for that time. Um, Annie and Paula, just special times. Dave and Marcia, uh, Dave and Marcia, our uh, brother and sister-in-law, is just uh, Thanks for coming. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Um, as I said, I, I love competition. Every pitch, you know, when I was at bat, you decide if that's one you wanted to hit the left field, the one you wanted to take the right field or up the middle, or just whatever the situation was during the game, you had to make a decision what would help your team the most. And that's what I try and do with the ball when I hit it. Uh, every ground ball hit you, you had to catch it. You know, you had to do something so your pitch had to throw one less pitch. And uh, after my arm went later on in my career, I got to pitch, and I understood that even more, how important it was for when the defensive player would make that big play for you, that how much easier it was for you. Um, like I said, I've been all over the country, played the best teams against some of the best people like Buddy Slater, Craig Elliott, uh, Bruce Mead, those guys, just uh, tremendous, tremendous players. I got to play in a hurricane down in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. And we played that game. We knew the hurricane was coming, so we kept playing right through the night. We'd sleep in the bar and, you know, underneath the, the tables and stuff because you couldn't go home because you never knew when the next game was going to start because other teams decided they weren't going to stay around and wait because they knew the tournament wouldn't finish. And so they leave, so you may be up. But that was the only time in my life that I played where the lights went off, <laughs> okay, when you were playing a game because we started a game at 5 in the morning, and I don't know what time it ended, but uh, we just remember that they turned the lights off. So... Pretty neat. We were delayed by a hurricane in North Carolina, in Burlington, when we played in the 60s and over competition. I played in St. Louis at the Gateway Classic, where there's six teams left. The rain came down. We did all the old tricks. You know, we'd dig the trenches, the holes. You'd take the buckets, and you'd empty the water. you put the sand out there. You'd throw gasoline all over it and light it and stuff. Uh, finally, we were playing for Anheuser Bush, and it was their, their tournament. Next thing you know, you saw two helicopters coming in over the fields, and they just hovered over the field for about 15 minutes to dry out the fields well enough so you could finish the game. Just uh, so many different things that we've got new experience. And probably the most, uh, I guess why I still love the game is just with this group of guys. Uh, I guess it would be about six weeks ago we were playing for the city championship. We were kind of old. Uh, we are anywhere from 65 up to 82 on our team, and we had three guys that had pulled muscles in the first game of the doubleheader, which we were undefeated. We lost that game. I think it was 18 to 13. But uh, So I gave him my good speech. You know, said, guys, just do what we can do. We only had 12 guys left. And so, yeah, they took it to heart, and we scored one run over the first five innings. So good talking. You know, <laughs> next time, I'll make sure I don't say anything. Uh, but uh, 
But sure enough, in the bottom of the six, we scored five runs, which is all you can in the 15 over, 16 over leagues. Went ahead six to five. They scored four runs. They were up nine to six. We came back and scored three runs in the bottom of the seventh to tie it nine to nine. Sure enough, in the eighth, they scored seven runs, and we scored eight. And so just, uh, I don't know, just uh, that type of stuff just, just makes you love coming back. It's a tremendous honor. I want to say thank you to all the people that wrote the letters of recommendation. You know, Bill, George Mallory, um, Tom Jones, uh, Whitey, um, Mark Hintz, uh, Frage, you know, E, just uh, uh, so many Rob Flynn, just uh, people that have been in the game a long, long time and they write positive things about you. It just makes you feel real, real good. So, and last but not least, I just want to say thank you to my mom and dad. They're not here anymore, but God bless you. Thank you. Jim, I was going to make a joke about uh, not following you where you're playing softball since you're playing in hurricanes and stuff like that, but you had to finish with the mom and dad, so thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Kind of, kind of killed my joke there. Um, all right, so our next inductee uh, for this evening is one of the best defensive and offensive catchers the modified game has ever seen. Aaron Carpenter played on locally, state, and nationally dominant teams such as Sikori Flyers, Marysville Goodyear, and Gillies, among others. Certainly a Hall of Fame type career followed Aaron from his uh, debut back in 1993. But let's take a brief look at what it takes to be a successful catcher, regardless of the le level of play, let alone a Hall of Fame career. A catcher hustles, he runs everywhere. He runs on the field and off the field, no matter which dugout he's in. He sprints down to the back uh, to back up first base on every grounder when the situation calls for it. He runs after every foul ball, every wild pitch, and every pass ball. Even when it's hot and humid, he never walks. Hustle is his default position. He's got that, the ball will not get by me attitude. He blocks everything. Whether they're runners on base or not, he takes it personally if the ball gets past him. Makes no difference on how wild the pitch was. If it gets past him, it was his fault and not on the pitcher. He's got a love-hate relationship with pain. He accepts that the only time a catcher doesn't feel pain is the day before the season starts. He feels the pain of the foul tip on his hand, his leg, his shoulders, his mask, just like every else, everyone else. But a part of him smiles, and he thinks to himself, this is why I love catching. He serves others. He knows that his primary job is to make his pitcher better. When some players on his team worry about their batting average or their RBIs, the catcher worries about how many walks there are in the game. He takes more pride in helping his pitcher get a complete game shutout than whether or not he goes four for four at the plate. He's a vocal leader. He talks just not to hear himself speak, but to say something that somebody else needs to hear. He reminds the pitcher to get over to first base to cover a ground ball on the right side of the field. He tells his middle infielders to make sure the first out on a double play. He yells the outs. He works the dugout between innings, and he makes sure his pitcher understands the game plan. He's got a keen awareness of details. He sees the subtle changes on where the batter's feet are located. He notices the change in his pitcher's mechanics late into the game, whether it's the grip or the release point. He knows the umpire's zone, and he calls the game accordingly. All of these defensive traits are Aaron Carpenter. Aaron's offensive capabilities alone are worthy of the Hall of Fame tonight. But to me, it's these defensive traits that set him apart from anyone else on the ball field. And for that, we can now call him the USA Softball of Michigan Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Carpenter.
So the debate before I got started was, would I finish in five minutes or would I get emotional? So I think I might lose both of them tonight. Um, since growing up in Port Huron, the names to Corey Flyers was big, especially in hockey. The Pee Wee travel team at the time was the Sequoia Flyers. I remember trying out for that team and being one of the last cuts and ended up playing for the Midas Bucks, the team just below them. So in 1995, when I had the opportunity that came for me to come play for the Sequoia Flyers modified softball team, I jumped. At the time, I was one of the youngest guys on the team. And also, it's back then when modified was slinging. It was totally different. And to this day, I credit that season to helping me for my senior season at college at Oakland University, where I was All-American and I won the GLIAC batting title. I only played one season as I was graduating from college to focus on that. Fast forward a couple of years, and after soldier surgery, I found myself trying to get back into playing modified softball again. And in the fall of 2002, Brett called me and said, I wanted to know if I wanted to come play for the Flyers again. I'm like, oh yeah. I jumped at that opportunity. This time it was a lot different, very different. We had Brett and Ryan Mullins. We had Roger Beaton. We had Scotty Nichols, Ronnie Cook, Billy Mosier, Dave Schultz, Ronnie Houle, Louis Jr., and Coach Hill, and many others along the way. And be able to play for these guys and have, and be able to play for the best sponsor in town in Big Lou, it made driving to Port Huron from Oxford twice a week well worth it. This is how close to the group we had. I'm gonna tell one little funny story that they all got me on. 2005, championship game, we're down in Meadville, uh, we're down in Meadville. This is game eight or nine. I have caught every game up to this point. We had just won, or we, we won the if game, or creating the if game. I walk into the dugout, and it was either Dave Schultz or Ryan Porty putting the gear on. I stopped and I said, what the hell are you doing? And they're like, we're putting the gear on. What for? Brett says, you need a break. What do you mean I need a break? I've caught this far up. What are you doing? I said, F that, where's Brett? And I went and I stormed right out. I said, Brett, what are you doing? Uh, we're, we're fine, we're just getting you. So we ended up winning it, um, but they, they they, they all got me on that one story. Yeah. There are several stories and events that have happened over the years that I know will, I'll never forget. In 2004, standing on third base, I got lined into the face by Chris McAuliffe as I was leading off third. Almost knocked me out. We won three national titles. Uh, being the first team in the area to win the 4th of July tournament, the one-legged bandit, the sack. I don't think I need to say anything else other than that. Uh, the 2005 bus trip, uh, we had to pull over on the side of the road so she could fix the windshield wiper. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe she backed into someone as well at the field. Uh, I can't remember for sure. Uh, I remember blowing out my Achilles right here in Midland, round in second in 2013. Uh, Pine Grove Park, uh, uh, having so many pops after the games and many, many weekend stories that I could tell that would last well past my five minute allotted time. Living and coaching in Oxford, people have always asked me during the time that I played, why do you drive back and forth to Port Huron for softball? Well, for me, besides the team, the players, and the overall enjoyment of playing, I had three young boys who always wanted to come and bring friends. And whether it was Drew and his buddies, or Brady and his friends, or Eli being solo, having them in the stands watching dad play meant the world to me. I wanted to be a positive example of how to play the game the right way. Hard work and always be positive example of how to play the game. And after the game, driving through my hometown, showing them where I lived, places I hung out, was awesome, and girls I dated. They tried not to tell my wife, but that was, they always rat me out. Um, I would like to thank my teammates that are here in support, as well as who I've played with over the years. 
with Brett and Chris especially. Chris, you and I talked about who, how cool it would be if we went in together. Well, it's only a few years apart, but just as special. My brother and my sister who are here coming to the games in support. My dad, who always made sure to make, to make it to the big games and always had a big bag of pain, uh, peanuts in the back of his truck waiting for everybody after the game. And especially to my mom, who passed away in, in December, who she was one of the biggest Flyer fans there was. I know she has a big smile on her face up in heaven, watching and wishing she could be here. I would especially like to thank my wife, who with three young boys supported me this entire time, allowing me every Monday and Wednesday to make that hour drive to Port Huron and back, every Labor Day weekend, 4th of July filled with softball. And especially in 2008, when my work had me in Chicago for three months, I was still allowed to go to nationals and win, and I know after we won, my team was a little bit bugged at me for having to go home early so I could be see my wife. So thank you all who have nominated me. It's truly an honor. It's been an awesome ride, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Thank you. We said it several times already, and we're going to say it again. When it comes to the umpire program, there is not a better program than the one for USA Softball of Michigan. For teams and players in this state, more is expected of USA umpires than anywhere else they may play, whatever association they play in. When our Michigan umpires travel outside of the state, there is a true assumption that if they are from Michigan, they will be better than most of the individuals on those respective crews. Once again, we have another great example of that when it comes to one of our best. There's no doubt that Viv Scoff is Hall of Fame worthy. 20 girls state fast pitch tournaments, 19 men's modified state tournaments, a combined nine women's fast pitch and modified state tournaments, a combined seven men's, women's, and co-ed slow pitch state tournaments, 13 girls and women's national tournaments, a modified national qualifier, a modified tournament umpire coordinator, Along with that, she is a member of the National Indicator Fraternity, achieved gold level status through the medals program, and is considered an elite fast pitch umpire. That alone would be enough to get her in, but I'm sure there are several things that I'm probably still missing. The dedication that she displays at the state and national level is also showcased at the local level. She has been a part of the Midland Softball Association Executive Board and continues to promote the many aspects of the USA Softball Umpire Program wherever she may be. To be honest, I was a little surprised with her nominations. See, I've learned over the years that in some cases, you know, the umpires, they, they do have a sense of humor. They do, seriously, they do. And a lot of times when stuff is submitted for an umpire, there's usually a few jokes, funny stories, stuff like that. I just had it in my head when I'm reading through Viv Scott's stuff that there's going to be something pretty funny that maybe I could even share here today. But I got to tell you, there really wasn't too much of that. In fact, the comments, quite frankly, were very powerful. For example, she was and still is a model umpire for all umpires to follow. She continues to support our game and can be seen around the diamonds, encouraging others and offering her expertise to those who will listen and ultimately benefit from it. Her dedication to improving as an umpire on the field and improving our umpire program overall is tangible evidence of her love for our game. She earned the respect of her peers, players, and coaches because of her work ethic. She lets her actions on the field do all the talking. There is no doubt that Viv Scoff is deserving and needs to be inducted into our Hall of Fame. 
She has a true sense of community, and when it comes to the USA softball family, especially the umpires, she takes that responsibility and those friendships that come along with it very, very seriously. Simply put, the umpire program, USA Softball of Michigan, is better because of the efforts and the example of Viv Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce and induct the newest member of the USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame, Ms. Viv Scott. This could be interesting. Um, what an honor. Thanks, Darren, for that introduction. I would like to congratulate all the other 2021 inductees. We are all very deserving of this great honor. I would like to thank Dave Shemp for nominating me and to the people who wrote letters of support, plus the Hall of Fame committee for all their time and effort. Also, thanks to Debbie, Darren, Troy, and USA Softball of Michigan for organizing this great event. It is truly appreciated. I started umpiring in 1994 as a way to stay in the game and earn a little extra money. I in no way ever thought I would be up here giving a Hall of Fame speech. There are a lot of people who have helped me along the way. I would like to thank my family for their continual support. Unfortunately, they could not be here tonight with me. I would like to thank Chuck Birch for getting me involved in the fast pitch and modified games. When I first started, I was just going to umpire some league slow pitch, but Chuck, he had a different idea. He was my partner on the field and in a lot of my early games. He also helped me study the rule book and go over casebook plays. Midland, Mount Pleasant, Bay City, and Saginaw hosted a lot of modified and J.O. tournaments early in my career. Because of that, I was fortunate to umpire many state tournaments. I had the privilege to umpire with a lot of great people throughout the state of Michigan. Thanks to all of you for making me a better umpire. I had a lot of great times both on and off the field. I would like to thank Linda Hoover for being a friend and a great role model for me. I could always talk to you about anything, especially what it took to be a female umpire in a predominantly male umpire world. You helped me to be a better umpire. I would like to thank the state umpire staff under the leadership of Gary Evans and Brian Smith. The training we receive as Michigan umpires is, is the best in the country and we are very fortunate to have a staff that is willing to help us be the best. I personally want to thank you all for the confidence you showed in me by giving me the opportunity to represent Michigan as an umpire at several USA softball national tournaments. We as umpires in Michigan, and especially Midland, have had the great opportunity to talk to and listen to two of the best umpires and teachers in the country in Bill Humphrey and Jerry Hansen. I can't tell you how many nights and weekends I sat around those two and just listened to the stories they told about umpiring. Some of my best times were sitting outside the umpire room at Curry Stadium or Hoyt Park just talking umpiring. One of the best ways to learn is to just sit back, watch, and listen. Thank you for sharing your experiences. There are two gentlemen who have been the most influential in my umpiring career. I would not be up here tonight without your continual support. First is Brian Smith. You have taught me so much over the years, either umpiring with you on the field, having you as my UIC, or as a clinician at state clinics or national schools. You always believed in me and had confidence in me even when I didn't. The many pep talks are greatly appreciated. Thank you. The second is Jason Jahoski. Even though I am much older than you, <laughs> we, started, we started umpiring about the same time. You have been there for me in so many ways, both on and off the field. 
The last few years, I have had the privilege of traveling with you to many of your national or international tournaments across the country. It has given us the opportunity to talk umpiring, go over rules and mechanics, talk about life in general, plus occasionally comment on people's driving skills. <laughs> you are truly a great friend, and I thank you for everything. I have some shelves at home that I have umpire pictures, signed softballs, flipping coins, patches, and other memorabilia from my national tournaments. I've also put up some awards that I am fortunate enough to have received. I look at them and realize how very fortunate I have been. I have been able to travel throughout the country and umpire softball. How awesome is that? I have also made many friends along the way. Umpires are truly a family. As they say, softball has been very good to me. Thank you all for being a part of this Hall of Fame celebration. Be well and stay safe. I got, I'll get it, I'll get it. All right. So before I uh, begin this next one, I just want to be thankful um, that online sports gambling only came about in, in the last year or so, because I'm going to take a minute and recognize some of the worst blown calls in major sports history. Just got a few. I mean, the, the list is really, really long, so uh, I recommend you do not Google that because it's a rabbit hole you're never going to get out of. Um, one of the most popular ones, the 2001 AFC Championship game, Tom Brady and the Tuck Rule, 1998 NHL playoffs, Brett Hall in the crease. 1986 World Cup, Diego Maradona's miraculous handball. Going back to 1972, the Olympic basketball gold medal game versus the Russians. Recently, the 2019 NFC Championship game between the Rams and the Saints, that infamous pass interference call, no flag thrown. Jim Joyce uh, ruining Andres Galarraga's perfect game in 2010. There was sports gambling in the state of Michigan back then. Whew, we'd all lose a lot of money. But there's one blown call that I think takes them all. That was Steve Yonke. <laughs> in the ISC World Championship game, seventh inning, bang, bang, play at the plate. Some people say he got it right. Some people say he got it wrong. I don't know. We'll let Steve be the call of that one. <laughs> really. I kid, I kid on, on that one. We've, we've got a lot of umpires in the room, and I want to make it out alive. So. Um, but one thing remains true. Umpiring is an extremely, extremely thankless job, especially in our game. You've got your partner out there. Sometimes you're working three men. Sometimes you've got more. But every call, every ball, every strike, every fair, every foul, all eyes are on you. When we make a mistake, we hear about it from the stands, we hear about it from the ball players. Sometimes we hear about it from our fellow umpires. You know, but it's that last point, our fellow umpires, that I want to focus on when talking about our inductee, Steve Yonke. Steve was a 33-year veteran of men's fast pitch softball. During those 33 years, he probably ran into a bad call here or there. But at that time, Steve saw that as an opportunity to give back to the game and he had one heck of a mentor group to lead him along the way. Mentors such as Elmer Snope, Kevin Bilial, and Tom Hutzfeldt. Steve is not the type of umpire who thinks he knows better. He's not the type that can, or really wants to, recite the rule book page for page. Instead, he understands that the only way he got better over his umpiring career was to learn and to study and to watch the game and to get better along the way. And get better he did. Steve's name is on the short list of umpires that are must-haves 
if you're running a fast pitch tournament. That's evident by his 14 national assignments, of which seven have been at the men's major and the men's open level. Whether it's at the local level, the state level, or even the national level, having Steve on your umpiring crew is an absolute no-brainer. You know the product that you're getting on the field. You know the consistency. You know no matter the outcome, both teams know that they got a fair shake and that the game was called correctly. Over the past few years, Steve has dedicated himself to giving back to the game locally by mentoring and working to grow the next generation of umpires in District 7. That, and amongst itself, is a Hall of Fame commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, our next inductee into the 2021 USA Softball of Michigan Hall of Fame, Steve Yonke. Well, this is not my thing at all, but I do have a picture on my phone of that call, so if anybody would like to see it, I have proof that I had it right. So I started playing this game at the age of 15. Um, went with my dad to a game. They happened to be short a player. He said, Steve can play, so they stuck me in the outfield, and I played every game the rest of that year, played for 33 years after that. Started umpiring in the local league because just like now, today, we're short umpires and we can't get enough to do this game. So I would play the first game and umpire the second game or vice versa. Um, it's just the way it worked and Elmer was the one umpire I used to work with quite a bit. One of the games after we were done, he came up and said, you don't do too bad a job. You might want to consider doing this more. So. <laughs> And then he kind of pushed me from there, got me going in a tournament. I was supposed to just do a couple of games. So he said, well, you can do a couple on Friday, a couple on Saturday or something. <laughs> so I said, okay, that sounds good. Well, I went and did that. And then they happened to, it happened to be a real hot summer day. And um, a couple of umpires had gone down over on another field. So they said, well, can you come over and help? So I'm like, sure, why not? So I went over there and ended up doing a semi-championship game or the semifinals, and that was kind of the beginning. Then you get to work with the other umpires and the camaraderie and the family kicks in and you're hooked. So um, it's just kind of the way it went. So I've had a chance to work with Kevin for a lot over these last 30 years, and Kevin's been not only a great teacher, a great mentor, um, a great source of knowledge when we needed to talk, uh, hash things out, but also a better friend. Thanks, Kevin, for all you've done for me and for this game. Um, after that, you know, I got my first opportunity to work some state tournaments, to work with the state staff, and you get to learn from some of the best. You know, guys like Brian Smith, Dave Selden, Rick Habercroft, Jeff York, Billy Norton. You get to work with Larry Tate. Um, it's just been a real pleasure. And these guys, when you work with them, you can't help but get better. So um, so I'd like to thank my kids, um, Gary and Tracy, for all their support over the years. Um, they've always been there for me. Um, we always rearrange family get-togethers when we're in town working um, because we always have that cop picking if game that throws in there and now all of a sudden you got to go later. So, But they've always been willing to work around it and I truly appreciate them and all the support they've given me over the years. My wife Loretta, I can't say enough about you. I mean you're my world, but she cooks. She always makes um, <laughs> Rice Krispie treats when we go away. Um, everybody says, well, you're gonna have Rice Krispie treats? Well, she, she's making them, and then cookies too. 
And then when we're local and we're close, she'll make meals, she'll bake and do all kinds of stuff. So she's always been there for me. Um, can't say enough. So the kind of support she gave me, the one championship game that I had, I was out in Iowa. She found out about it. Her and Gary jumped in the car, drove five hours to get out there in time for the championship game and to watch it. So um, that's the kind of support they gave me. So. But to be fair, our first, we met at the ballpark. Our first date was to a ball game. So she should have had an idea. I just don't think she was quite expecting it to go as long as it did, 50 some years. So, so but thank you for everything. And I appreciate this great honor. Probably the one regret that I have is that I didn't get a chance to work on the field with Jerry and Bill. Um, I would have loved to have had a chance to work with those guys. But other than that, I just love this game. I love being a part of it. And I love being a part of the umpire family. So thank you very much for this great honor. I truly appreciate it. Thanks. Steve, I remember those conversations about uh, whether or not we should have you as an umpire at a given tournament. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, he can do this, he can do that. Hey, you think his wife will make those Rice Krispie treats? <laughs> and I'll be honest, I don't know if you know, that was quite frankly the deal breaker a lot of times, a lot of times. I hear you, I hear you. Well done, sir. So sometimes when we receive these information forms, as I said before, we always get some pretty interesting informational pieces. But it's always fascinating to me when some of these items feature names within USA Softball that I would consider legendary, such as the case for Hartley Byers. Some of the materials that were submitted featured awards, certificates, and other memorabilia that had some very powerful names in USA Softball. Names such as Matt Urban, Jim Wolford, Bernie Profato, Paul Piernak, Craig Cress, Norm Davis, Jim Craig, and others. Does it mean that Hartley's been around for a while? Yeah, it certainly does. But what it also does is showcase that he was trained by some of the best of the best, and more importantly, took that training and showcased it on and off the field. Hartley has done a little bit of everything for USA Softball of Michigan. He's been a player, a manager, a district commissioner, tournament director, UIC, and has done all of those things with dignity and class. Hartley, just to know, for you to understand how much you are appreciated, there are some comments from some of your colleagues that you should hear. He learned his craft. He participated wherever it was needed. He was not just an attending umpire for clinics or schools, but he helped in any way he could. That was from Gary Evans. There are a lot of positive accounts to be said about Hart, but the only thing above all others is that he is true blue, always has been, and always will be. That was from Chris Armillo. This man is a student of the game and shares his experience with others. We need more Hartley buyers in this world to help us build up the ranks. That was from Laura Jackson. Hartley has been and continues to be responsible for many people that have become umpires and have helped them better their craft. That was from my good friends, Eric Tompkins from the city of Wyoming. But probably my favorite, he is held in the highest regard among players coaches and umpires alike, his exceptional standards not only motivates umpires, it motivates players to conduct themselves to a higher standard while playing as well. His efforts are always to the greater good of the sport rather than self-fulfillment. That was from Christina Berry from the city of Greenville. There were many more comments, but these were the ones that stood out to me. But I have a personal stake in this as well. I played slow pitch 
in leagues in Wyoming at Palmer Park, and Hartley was one of our umpires. It was a bunch of my buddies that had put this team together. That's where I truly got to know meet, to meet and know Hartley. We did not have a great team, but it really was a joy to be a part of a program that included Hartley Buyers. In fact, one day, we had a player bought a brand new bat for the game. He walked up to the plate proud as a peacock and just excited to use this brand new white and blue bat that I'm pretty sure he bought at Meyer. I didn't get that confirmed, but that's, that's what he did. He got up to the plate the first time he connected with the ball, and Hartley, you were behind the plate on that time. He swung. There was a strange sound that came from that bat. I don't know what emanated from it, but when the ball hit the bat, something wasn't right. He came up the second time, and the same exact thing happened. It was just not right. Something was wrong. My buddy and I, we pulled his bat to see what in the world he was using. It said official softball on it. In fact, it even had a player signature on it. It was a certified Michelle Fernandez youth female fast pitch softball bat. Now, I got to tell you, Hart, I don't know if you remember this, but this poor guy was so embarrassed, and I'm sure he got some ribbing from yours truly and a few others, but you did something I'll never forget. You calmly pulled him aside, and you told him something along the lines of, hey, don't worry about it. And to be fair, Michelle Fernandez, she was a really good player. <laughs> It seemed to calm him down, uh, but he didn't play with us the next year. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that calm demeanor, that presence, that enjoyment of the game, you brought that then and you continue to do so now. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to induct the newest member of the USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame, Mr. Hartley Byers. Don't believe any of it. <laughs> Standing up here, some famous last words that I've always cherished. George Custer's last stand. What am I doing here? Uh, it's because of people like this. Back in, uh, well, I'm from District 7. And back there we have the District 7 Umpires Association. And we have, uh, well, you've mentioned the names, Elmer Snow, and we have the E Award, which stands for Enthusiasm, Endurance, and Excellence. And we have given that out over many, many years. As of tonight, we are going to establish a brand new District 7 Umpires Award. And it's going to be presented by Hall of Famer Jim Inger, 2018 class, to our wonderful, outstanding district umpire, Robert Hicks. It's called the D7 Crying Towel. <laughs> Thank you for your words of wisdom, Robert. Just be quiet. <laughs> and you mentioned Elmer. I want you to know I got a phone call from him. We all know he's in heaven. We chit-chatted for a while, and he wanted me to give you a message. Congratulations, you're working second base tomorrow. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Honestly, I also want to thank my family. They're not here tonight because of that stupid thing called COVID. But they're here. Yes, I'm a crybaby Bob. <laughs> At any rate, I really appreciate uh, the honor 
And uh, I was just inducted into the Kenroy Hills High School Hall of Fame. And at that ceremony, I've read the following, which pretty much covers USA softball to a degree, that when something needs to be done, let's do it. And it's called Think About It. This is a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. And they're all here in this room tonight. Amen. There was an important job to be done. And everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did. Somebody got angry about that because it's everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Here in USA Softball, that is not our motto. Something needs to be done, we get her done. District 7, I am proud to be part of that family. And in closing, I want to uh, pass on a quote from the legendary Tom Landry and Tim Tebow. And it is, somewhere in these notes, it isn't what you leave behind, let's start all over, what you take with you isn't really important when you leave this earth. It's what you leave behind. USA Softball Michigan is the leader. Thank you. So our next inductee remains to this day one of the most decorated and frankly feared pitchers in the men's fast pitch game. I've had the privilege of uh, facing Doug Gillis on, on a few occasions. Uh, every at bat that I've had against him, I think, this is my time. Finally going to get a hit off of him. As I'm walking with my head down to the dugout, damn it, he got me again. I always wondered how he got that ball to move the way that he does. And I realized after reading through his uh, nomination packet, he's a heck of a pitcher. He was always working to hone his craft. Doug began his playing career, just like many of us here in the room, kind of just hanging around the ball field, watching and learning a little bit. Um, you know, watching some of the guys that came before him, seeing what they did, staying late after the game or the practice, just kind of being a general fan of the sport of softball. But Doug's long career can be attributed not only to his playing ability, but his ability to adjust as the game evolved. You know, whether it's the, the wooden bat era or, you know, the aluminum bat era to today's composite crazy $400 bat era, Doug always found a way to throw hard when the situation called for it or to be a little bit more sneaky and crafty when the situation called for it. He surrounded himself with some of the best position players and hitters in the game. Now that's not to say that Doug hid in the shadows. In fact, it was quite the opposite. He stood out. It was those best position players and the hitters in the game that wanted Doug on their team. He became the hot commodity in the fast pitch community and his talents were recognized at the highest level. Doug was a six time member of the national team spanning almost three decades. He's fifth on the all-time win list for Team USA, winning a gold medal in the 2002 Pan American Games and another gold medal in the 1998 USA Olympic Festival. He's a two-time USA major national champion, being an All-American three times, in addition to two runner-up major finishes, finishes 
as the Explorer's number one option in 1998 and 1999. Aside from being a heck of a pitcher, Doug is also a heck of a pitching coach. In 2019, he led Virginia Tech to the ACC championship. In his coaching career, he's coached 10 Miss Michigan Softball Pitchers of the Year, 62 state champion pitchers, and he holds the distinct honor of being the only pitching coach to develop a Pitcher of the Year in four major NCAA conferences, including the Big Ten, Big 12, ACC, and the SEC. After a health scare back in 2006 that could have easily have ended Doug's pitching career, it was a testament to the, as attested in his many letters of recommendation, it was his determination and his work ethic that brought him back to the diamond. It was that never give up attitude, that never say die attitude. And that's the attitude that we recognize today, the attitude that created a Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Gillis. All right. Thanks, Roy. Yes. Um, my career, I was very fortunate and privileged, okay, uh, for a long time. So, to start with, I had a crazy father um, who um, did things big and to the max, okay? And he had it all, you know, a good softball team, a pretty good softball team. And he got this idea of bringing these foreigners over that nobody ever heard of to, you know, pitch for his team. So he brought Omen Walford over um, and Kevin Hurley hit over from uh, New Zealand and to play for his team, which is not ordinary, you know. Um, and a young Michael White um, that lived us, with us for a year, okay? So I was fortunate because I was a bat boy, I was young, and little did I know, I was learning from some of the best in the world. And they taught me to think bigger. And I noticed when I was young and I asked them questions, and I was a little kid, and you know, I asked Hurley, he and Walford how many no-hitters they had or how many strikeouts they had in their career, and they had no idea because they were working on bigger things. So I learned that from them. And, and I was lucky and fortunate enough to start my career in the, um, in the Mich Mid Mid Michigan Thumb League, okay? Um, it was perfect for me because I was young. And I wasn't ready to play men's major at that time. So I learned it out, you know, there because I was younger and, and it was a perfect league for me, okay? But I was lucky again and fortunate when I was in my 20s and 30s, um, you know, I played across the country and men's major softball was still really big. So it was like, you know, I was blessed to do that, okay? Um, I was lucky to fortunate enough to play with a team like Seattle Pay and Pack, which is a really good team. And it wasn't for Graham Robertson, our ace on the staff, and a great team. Uh, those national tournament games I threw would be meaningless. So, um, so that was like, you know, privilege to do that. But when I was done traveling the country and I moved back home to play, um, you know, there was still a good uh, major team in Michigan. So the Megan Explorers, I played for them. Well, I was like lucky and fortunate because all the guys were roughly my age and they're all in their prime. Little did I know, um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll had a pretty good 10 year run and lucky for enough to me, I met those guys and uh, they're all around the same age as me and they're all in their prime. So we had a good run. So it's fortunate that timing worked out. Uh, so. Uh, now, you know, if I was born and raised in Texas or South or um, North Carolina or Georgia, that wouldn't have happened because the men's game has died there a long time ago. All right, so I was just fortunate to be from Michigan where the fast pitch is a hotbed. So, um, but the, the most fortunate thing is 
this is one of the things that led to me coaching college and something that I can make a living at. So um, at fall practice at Virginia Tech, I heard uh, parents complaining about their, or sorry, um, players complaining about their parents. And which kids do, right? And I'll, they said, I'll never act like that when I get old, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I laughed and I said, you will act exactly like that when you get old, okay? Um, you can't help it, okay? So on that note, because it's in my DNA, I'm going to share a sort of short softball story with you, okay? So I was lucky to play um, in the, with the Decatur Pride. Uh, for a number of years, and, and behind a pitcher of um, Chub Trangaroa, which is a great pitcher. And at Emerson Park, just down the road, we were in the winner's bracket final of the 95 um, um, ASA, you know, tournament, men's major tournament. And Chubby was on fire. He was throwing really good. So I was in relief as I pitched the, the game the night before, and, but Chubby was throwing so well, there was little chance of me going in the relief. So Ross Day, a good friend of mine who is no longer with us, uh, was thrown out in the bottom of seventh on a bang, bang, close play. So he argued and the team argued, you know, it's a big deal, right? Bottom of seventh, winner's record final, the major. And then um, he got thrown out. So I jumped the short fence in the dugout and argued, and I got thrown out, okay? And, you know, so apparently, you know, players who jump the fence argue with a base ump at second base about a call at home that he had nothing to do with, okay? You know, that doesn't go over well. So Ross was relegated to the left field bullpen because he got thrown out, and I was too, okay? So, um, but fortunately, we won the game, you know, in the 10th. So, but after the game, I saw my mom. And my mom said, um, you know, and my mom is really nice. You know, she, um, she was a lot nicer than to my dad. Okay, put it that way. Okay, and um, and she said that was nice of you go to go out and visit Ross in the bullpen when he got thrown out. And uh, I said, Mom, I was thrown out too. Okay, so um, but it gets even better. Okay, because the um, the ump that threw him out of the game was none other than whoa, none other than Brian Smith. You're a ticket taker for tonight's game and the notable umpire from Michigan, okay? So, um, so anyway, but the most uh, amazing and fortunate thing, I started my career in the Mid-Michigan Thumb League, like I mentioned earlier. But when I wasn't good enough to play men's major at a high level, um, I finished it there, okay? in the same league, okay, a few years ago. And that it was some 39 years later, okay, which is remarkable for the state of men's fast pits in the game, you know, in the country today, um, for a league that lasts that long. So, um, and it also speaks a tremendous amount about the people who kept that league running for all those years. Okay, so there's so many people to thank in my career, I can't even start and end. Um, so if you had, um, I want to thank everybody who any anything to do with helping me along the way. And also thanks to the hall for, and, um, and uh, Dr. Green, so thank you.
So I have to admit, when Troy started his uh, introduction of uh, Mr. Gillis there, I, uh, I got to thinking, is he going to go, oh, I've got a chance to face him, and uh, no, I couldn't do it. You know, he struck me out. I really thought he was going to say, I don't cheer about the call, because you know, Yankee was behind the plate. But I didn't, uh, I didn't, I don't know if that's true or not. No, I wasn't sure. Okay, good. We're good to go. All right, big fella. Yeah, right. You're the last one. <laughs> it is my honor to introduce Steve Allen for induction into the USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame. Steve is one of those people. <laughs> Steve is one of those people who has the talent, willingness, and attitude to help whenever and wherever it is needed. He is a solid umpire who approaches games with the same vigor and professionalism, whether it's a local recreation game or a national championship contest. He is also willing to travel wherever it is necessary. That presence that he has alone makes any game, tournament, or event that much better. For as many years as he has umpired, he is still a student of the game and is always willing to learn in order to be better on and off the field. He works hard to be the best umpire that he can be, and it shows. However, what I appreciate about him is all the other things that he does to help make the game the best it can be. Steve may be best known as an umpire, but he really is a jack of all trades. He has been a UIC, a tournament umpire, district commissioner, district UIC, he tests bats for his local leagues and any other league that may or may not be near his area. And he has even helped with the necessary needs of the state office, including the roof or any other repairs that may have been needed. He really is somebody that can do it all. This man is involved in so many aspects of the USA Softball of Michigan program, but for me, it is his service on our slow pitch classification committee that stands out. His perspective on this committee is very unique. He doesn't just take the approach of being an umpire and coming up with a judgment solely based on that. Rather, he takes into account the program as a whole and what makes sense for it as well as where teams and players deservedly should be. Sometimes when it comes to appeals, it's hard not to get carried away on certain things. But Steve's perspective is a whole perspective that makes the process fair and balanced. I am grateful for his work on this committee. And as one would expect with Steve's involvement, the process and our game is better because of it. Yet there is one highlight that I think is his best quality. And that is his emphasis on teamwork and having great teammates. If you'll indulge me, I would like to take a moment to talk about his greatest teammate, and that is his wife, Linda. When you get one, you get the other. And quite frankly, you're better off because of it. Linda is a valued teammate to USA Softball of Michigan as well. Steve and Linda truly showcase the love they have for this game and the love they have for each other. In both cases, it is inspiring. Linda, on behalf of USA Softball of Michigan, thank you for your involvement in our program. It is appreciated. And Steve, as I continue to be involved in USA Softball and accumulate years of doing so, I am starting to realize that I am fortunate enough to start having not as many, but similar stories to what we're hearing tonight, both good and bad. Some of these stories potentially could rival those of a Jerry Hansen or a Bill Humphrey someday. But what I can tell you is this, I do have multiple stories of tournament play, national umpire schools, state clinics, committee meetings, and conversations where help was needed. There are very few of those memories or stories in my life in which you weren't there. You are willing, you are unselfish, 
and you are a truly giving person. You've made me better, and you've made this association better. It is my honor to introduce to you the newest member of the USA Softball of Michigan's Hall of Fame, my friend, Mr. Steve Allen. Don't worry, folks, it's not as long as it looks. I just had to make the letters bigger so I could read it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm honored and I'm very humbled to be standing up here receiving this award, award with all the greatness in this room. I only have a few thank yous to give out, and then I'm out of here. Okay? Number one, to Laura Jackson for being foolish enough for submitting my name for this award. <laughs> Number two, for the Hall of Fame committee for believing all the lies and their stories that they sent <laughs> and still voting me in. <laughs> Number three, to all my past tournament UICs, and most of them are in this room, for pushing me and make me a better umpire. Number four, this one is dual fold, to the state staff and the executive committee for taking me under their wings and making me realize it is just one big family and keep pushing me to make me do a better job. To my family for showing up tonight, especially my mom and dad, for keeping everything running smoothly at home with the business while I was out gallivanting all over the country, <laughs> especially on last minute's notices, which seemed to happen to me a lot. My last thank you goes out to my beautiful wife, Linda. A lot of you don't know this. Last weekend, I was in Muskegon at a tournament. It's the first tournament she's missed in 40 years. She's always been with me. She's always helped at everything she could do at a tournament, from making sure umpires have water. Okay, um, I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> water. Help and serve lunch and making sure the flies stayed off the food. <laughs> Taking pictures. In the last few years, She's learned how to sign in ball players for state tournaments, and she knows how to use the bat checking machine the right way. Okay? She's been my rock through all of this for me. And for the 46 years we've been married, as far as I'm concerned, this award is as much hers as it is mine. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Steve. That was awesome. You know, speaking of that willingness and being there whenever something is needed, uh, Steve, they're a little short-staffed here, so Steve, after she could help pick up after, we'd appreciate that. I thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's awesome. <laughs> Folks, this has been... Um, just a wonderful, wonderful night. It really is truly just great to see everybody and to hear the wonderful stories and to truly, truly look at this as a glorified family reunion because that's what it is. Um, to our newest inductees, thank you for your willingness to be here. Thank you for bringing your friends and family here um, it has just been a long time coming. 
So ladies and gentlemen, if you would, one last round of applause for our inductees for 2021. So inductees, once this concludes, which will be shortly, we're going to need you to come back up here in a little bit. We want to take a uh, photo. I believe we will probably take an additional photo. Debbie, I should probably ask you this of, with everybody, all Hall of Famers, we're going to try and get one of those as well. So first the newest inductees, then everybody. Uh, the cash bar will be open until 11 p.m. today, and you're free to hang out indoors, outdoors, with whatever you would like to do. But as we always do, we are going to close with a toast to the Hall of Famers, which is written in your program on the back side. What's the Michigan Amateur Softball Hall of Fame? Tis an honor bestowed upon the best in the game. Be they umpires or managers or sponsors or such, or players who have possessed a sort of magic touch. They are the men and women who have contributed to a true love for the game, which is held by me and you. No matter where you travel across this Great Lake State, you're bound to come across a Hall of Fame softball great. They come from many cities where you find a park where the great game of softball is played days or after dark. For the size of the village doesn't matter at all because all across Michigan, you'll find they play good ball. As to the players who have been deemed the very best, each will assure you they'd not be here without the rest of their teammates who have all helped them to reach this plateau. It takes a true team effort to overcome the foe. Though each of them has shown us that they're a cut above through pitching or hitting or wielding a golden glove, to be named as a softball great really is quite rare, but don't forget at least eight others helped place them there. Thus we are all gathered to raise our glasses high, saluting the best of the best, be they gal or guy. To all our softball comrades on earth or high above, God bless our softball family in the game we all love. Dick Barker, Lansing, class of 1989. Thank you once again for an amazing evening. I hope we get a chance to see all of you again next year on October 1st of 2022. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so very much for being here. God bless you all. Have a great rest of your night.